Hey, so this is Matt Sainsing from DAV, and I'm here with uh, VA's Executive Director of Medical Disability Exams Program Office, uh, the Veterans Benefits Administration, uh, David McClenican. Um, and we're going to talk about CMP exams and what the VA is doing um, with allowing these exams uh, recently. But first, David, if you could kind of explain what your office does and, and how it's important to veterans. Sure. So the uh, Medical Disability Examination Program Office supports basically the compensation and pension benefit programs. Both of them uh, require us to make a determination about disability. Uh, compensation is our biggest program. Um, and uh, pension is different. It's for wartime veterans, but still there's a disability com component to it. Um, VA has a duty to assist claimants in developing their claims. And one of the most important components of that is providing a medical disability evaluation if it's required in a, in a claim. And it is required in most claims. Uh, so if you look at the number of claims that we decide uh, every year, which for many years has been well over a million compensation and pension claims, uh, generally speaking, there's a, an exam that's required in every one of those. And in some cases, it's multiple exams. Uh, so it's a very important part of uh, our business of providing veterans uh, their benefits and determining what level of valuation, for example, their compensation claim might require. So if veterans out there that have a VA disability rating, when they went to exams, they went to one of these exams. And if a veteran out there, a CMP exam, if one of these veterans was looking for maybe an increase or looking for to have another uh, lingering ailment checked, uh, the VA would schedule uh, a similar exam well, such as this, is that correct? Yes, so uh, the way it works is uh, our uh, claim processors take a look at uh, the claim and decide whether a, a, uh, an exam is required or not. Mm -hmm. They also decide what type of exam. So um, as you may know, you know, many claims involve multiple um, conditions. So uh, what we will do is we will schedule exams and it may be a package of exams uh, dealing with each of the different disability components. Um, so it may be sent to three different individuals who do a particular type of exam uh, that will provide that. It's packaged back up and then um, sent back to claims processors in the, in the claimant's e-folder in BBMS where we process claims. So that's in general at a very high level how it, how it works is uh, we determine what exam is needed. Um, and there's some nuances that we might want to discuss such as sure. It doesn't always mean that you have to appear in person, and this is particularly important during uh, this national emergency that we're in right now, because we do many exams without uh, the claimant actually having to show up in person. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Um, so, as everyone's aware, we're in the middle of this ongoing uh, pandemic, and I don't think there's any organization under the sun that has not been affected in some way, either with, through um, you know, health-wise or, or, or economically. Um, and the VA is no exception to that. And recently, VA has announced that they're resuming uh, CMP exams in certain areas. So I'd like to ask, uh, where are these uh, lo locations and what can veterans expect uh, if they have an exam scheduled? All right, great question. So uh, let me start at the beginning, back in about um, early April, uh, we suspended all in-person exams uh, due to the pandemic. Um, understandable, we, we have to protect uh, claimants, but as well as the providers that are doing, doing the exams. Uh, so we suspended them. Uh, we also took another, uh, other steps to ensure that suspending those exams would not uh, have an adverse impact on, on claimants. So a veteran had a claim pending uh, and there was an exam scheduled the fact that they did not show up for an exam would not be held against them. Um, and we would um, hold that exam till later if it has to be an in-person exam. But we would hold it till later and, and when we can do it, we will, we will take care of that exam. We also uh, suspended uh, the rules that apply to responding to VA correspondence, submitting evidence, all those types of things were suspended during the pandemic as well. Mm -hmm. So if somebody failed to respond to our request for um, some type of evidence or other information that we needed for the claim, it's not going to be held against them. And of okay. course, we, we pay benefits retroactive to the date of claim. So in yeah. the end, yeah. no veteran is going to lose out on, on any benefits. Um, but what we've done is we decided that uh, 
um, we would link our um, resumption of in-person exams. And I will say that most exams need to be an in-person exam, although many you know, scores of them have been completed um, through the ACE program, Acceptable Clinical Evidence, and that's where a, a examiner reviews a medical record and, and all the records in the veteran's claim that pertain to the disability and see if they can provide the examination result without actually meeting in person. And then secondly, we've been doing a lot of what we're calling tele-CNP uh, exam. So that's a, a hookup like we have here where um, the examiner talks to the, the claimant and uh, completes the examination in that way. Now, not all exams can be done that way. Uh, so there's a, a large set of them that are pending an in-person so we suspended those in-person exams in early April. On May 28th, uh, we, we issued a news release saying that we were resuming in-person exams in certain areas. And what we did is we relied on the risk assessment that's being done by VA medical centers across the country. Okay. So um, I think, as you know, VA medical centers have in-person primary care appointments where a veteran will go into the facility and uh, meet with their physician in an outpatient uh, clinic setting. Uh, what we did is we concluded, well, if VHA has determined, based on the, the administration's gating criteria for reopening the country, um, that it's appropriate to do those in-person contacts in a clinical environment in a VA medical center or other outpatient facility, that we would do the same for in-person exams. So this is kind of our link to we need a risk assessment because we don't want to put any, any veterans in harm's way uh, as far as exposing them to the virus. But we also don't want to risk providers that are having to see uh, multiple people during the, during the day. So that's what we did. And we, we started with 20 uh, areas of the country that BHA identified as their initial sites where, where they were going to start some of these appointments. Um, the good news is, since those 20 sites, we've been adding, uh, almost on a daily basis, we've been adding other areas of the country as BHA okay. opened other areas for those primary care outpatient appointments. We've been doing the same with exams. Uh, when we first started those 20, initial 20 areas, it was about 13% of our uh, pending exam inventory that was, was pending that was covered by it. So a very small portion. Uh, what that means is our contract exam um, vendors, we, we do these exams through contracts that we have with right. providers. <clears throat> about 13% of, of our workload could be done uh, for those initial 20 sites. We're currently at a point where we can cover 70% uh, of our inventory. And we've, so, so that's been since May 28th. So basically, over the last month, we've expanded to about 70% of all of the exams that are pending. Uh, we, our contract vendors can work them. Um, so a lot of work's been done over that period of time to get them up and going. Um, it, even with that, though, it's still not an overnight process. Veterans have to be given at least five days notice when their, um, their exam is scheduled. Um, in many cases, our contract vendors had to bring uh, the local physicians and, and examiners that they use across the country back into service. So there was, you know, about a week or two delay after we give them the go ahead in a particular area to get started. Okay. But in general, we've made a lot of progress on getting those exams up and going. That's basically where we're at now. And how does a veteran find out if they're in an area that has these exams, uh, that are restarting having these exams? All right. So, um, Good question. Uh, what we've done is we've created an interactive map. It's available um, on the on VA's COVID uh, FAQ site. So it's real easy to find if you go to that uh, FAQ site where um, frequently asked questions site where uh, um, basically VA has centralized all the questions that might come up about how we're handling uh, our work in the, you know, the COVID-19 environment. If you go to that website and there's a link to exams, it'll take you to a interactive map and the map will show you all the areas of the country where uh, we've authorized our vendors to start in-person exams. You can even uh, type in your zip code, uh, type in the zip codes, it'll tell you whether it's within or without of, out, or outside of that, uh, those areas where we started. Um, 
again, we you know covered wide, wide swaths of the country. Uh, nonetheless, there are still some some uh, high population areas in certain areas of the country where uh, we're not there yet. But um, that's an easy way to check and see if it's an area where um, we will be holding exams. And these these cities or these these different um, regions that that are starting to restart. You know, I, I think you said. Um, calculations are being done on a daily basis. And I think as we're seeing the ebb and the flow of, of the virus um, increasing in some areas um, and decreasing in others, um, the VA is taking a look at that and kind of taking that into account and, and adjusting, cordial, adjusting accordingly. And the Army would say adjust for fire, but probably wouldn't use that language. Uh, uh, no, but, but you're correct. I mean, this is a concern. <clears throat> Uh, you know, everybody that's watching the news these days, you'll see that there are, you know, there's spikes in, in, uh, in virus infections around the country, uh, more than 20 states now, I believe. Uh, uh, so that's, that's a concern and something we have to watch. And, and we will handle that in the same way that we handled the, the startup, again, which is if uh, BHA's risk assessment in an area is that they will no longer or will suspend again, in-person primary care outpatient appointments, then and we will do the same for um, in-person CMP exams. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that we, it won't get to that point, uh, but we always have to balance that risk against the need to do these exams. Um, you know, the drawback to, to all of this, of course, is that we need veterans to get their benefits in their pocket and start that, that money flowing. But we can't do it without an exam in, in most cases. And, so that's the drawback is although everybody's going to be made whole when we eventually complete the claim, we really need these exams to, to get the decisions flowing on, on their claims. And especially now, a lot of, a lot of people in the country and veterans are, are, are not immune, uh, feeling the economic impacts of, of economies shutting down, losing hours, losing, being furloughed, losing jobs. Um, if they own a business, having orders canceled, all these things play into it. And so if, VA, if they're relying on VA compensation or future VA disability, um, getting that exam is really the, 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 the first part of, this, of, of their journey. Um, what can veterans do before their exam to prepare themselves so when they're ready to go uh, the day of the exam? Sure. So uh, it's always the case that, um, you know, prepare for your exam, make sure that VA has all the evidence that's required in, in your case. Make sure that we've received all the medical records that you have. Um, and of course, a veteran doesn't have to actually provide us everything. If, if, if we learn of where we might be able to get some, some evidence for the claim and the veteran doesn't have it, we have an obligation to go out and get it. So when I say provide everything you have, um, the quickest way to get the claim going is give us everything you've got um, to include information that you've gathered on your own. Uh, but in addition to that, identify where we need to go and ask for evidence also. So it may be that you received treatment at a non-VA facility somewhere, um, you don't have the records, but you know that you had treatment there. That would be something you need to tell us about. Uh, the idea is you want us to have all the evidence uh, before the exam is done. Once the exam is done, of course, the, uh, um, the, the examiner will use all of that information that's available to them. Um, but we want the claim to, to flow smoothly from the examination to the decision. So, uh, you know, that's the key thing is, is make sure that we have everything we need to decide the claim because we want to we wanna decide it quickly. A couple other things to keep in mind uh, these days regarding uh, exams. Um, the, the exams are scheduled by our contract vendors. So um, we, you don't need to call VA to schedule an exam. Uh, we know all of the exams that are pending uh, and the vendors will be reaching out to the oldest first, unless it's one of our priority cases, like a terminal illness or uh, other hardship priorities that we have. They'll be reaching out to the veteran, scheduling the exam um, in, in that priority order. They also have to make sure that the veteran is willing to come in at this time for an in-person exam. Uh, it is not mandatory during the national emergency. If the veteran still has concerns about it, appearing for an exam, that's not a problem. We'll just hold that exam in abeyance uh, and we will reschedule it when the time is right, which is probably when the national emergency is over. Um, so. Still, no harm to any veteran for not showing up. Um, but we'll reach out, we'll schedule it. 
Um, be prepared because these days when you show up for an in-person exam, you'll have to wear protective equipment such as a right. mask. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have that equipment, the, uh, the examiner will provide it to you. So uh, <coughs> these days just need to be aware that it's a little bit different than in the past. Uh, exams can only be done with protective equipment on at this time. Um, and we are only doing exams right now that can be done with that equipment in place. So okay. if it's a exam where, where it has to be done without protective equipment, uh, that's a second order of priority because again, we are, we're concerned about uh, uh, spreading the virus. So just these days a little bit different, uh, make sure we have everything, but also be aware of what's going to happen. And the schedulers will advise veterans of that as they're scheduling the exams. And it's, it's great that you mentioned um, wearing a face covering or bringing their own mask. And if, if they can't do that, then VA will provide one. Um, uh, and also I would recommend veterans should definitely leave, give ample time for screening and process before entering a, a VA right. facility because um, there may be a long line and you know some people may be feeling under the weather so they, they need to do their job. So giving a good buffer of time is, is, will help move the process along so smoothly. Yeah, and just to address concerns, I mean, uh, the requirements that we gave to our contract vendors for these exams are very thorough and they're based on CDC requirements. So <laughs> as far as uh, protective equipment, sanitation, screening, uh, social distancing, all those things have to be in place and addressed uh, before a, a provider can actually do the examination. So to some extent, if any veteran has concerns, just be aware that uh, that makes the process less efficient, but it's for the purpose of everybody's safety. Now, we've talked a lot about the CMP exams and how they're reopening, and, but that, again, we've also talked about how that's kind of the, the very beginning of, of the, the, the road um, to getting disability uh, compensation or getting compensation from the VA for um, service-connected uh, injuries and ailments. Um, but, well, what else can veterans do to help move along their claim after the exam? You know, um, is there any, should like require, if they come across new evidence um, or anything like that? Yes, I, so before the pandemic, uh, you know, we were doing decisions pretty rapidly, actually. Uh, you know, our, we were turning them around in roughly 90, 90 to 100 days, uh, which is really quite, quite quick compared to, you know, several years ago in the past uh, where we had a claims backlog. Um, so we've gotten very efficient at, at doing them. Um, so the time lag between the exam and actually getting the decision on the claim is, is not all that long. Um, but certainly, if at any time a veteran has additional evidence, um, then it should always be submitted to VA. And whether it's establishing a increased disability on a, a condition that's already service connected or it's in support of a claim that's pending, uh, that should always be done. Um, but as far as moving it, moving it along uh, more quickly, um, as long as we have everything, uh, we're turning the decisions around quickly. Part of the problem though with having this, uh, this inventory of excess exams that we have to get done is um, what that's gonna do is it's gonna hurt our timeliness on, on processing claims, right? Because if you have a bunch of exams that you need before you can complete a claim, and then once we start receiving more new claims behind those, uh, we've really gotta get through those exams, get them, get them finished and get the claims process moving back to where it was. Um, so it's unfortunate, but that's the situation we're dealing with right now. Yeah, that, that makes sense, even if it is a, an unfortunate rally. And one thing I, I should definitely add um, before I go to my last question here, David, and thanks again, you've been very uh, generous with your time this afternoon. Um, uh, for veterans out there who are who want to know how to start the journey and process of a VA claim, I, you know, I work for DAV, so I'd definitely say, don't go it alone. Contact the DAV service officer. You can go to benefitsquestions.org. Uh, you can find a local national service officer in your area. Um, they can get this ball started for you or at least answer your questions. So please don't feel like you have to do it alone. Um, and thanks again, uh, David. Um, where can veterans go for more information about CMP exams or, or anything uh, that has to do with their claim? So uh, VA.gov has, has all the information that you could possibly want about how to file a claim. You can do it electronically or, or submit it otherwise. Um, I wanna echo your recommendation. I've worked with DAV for, for many years on many different things and uh, it's a great organization. Uh, so I, I would echo that, uh, work with DAV or, um, you know, uh, I think that's 
you're going to hear that advice from pretty much uh, everybody if you're a claimant. Um, there's no need to go it alone. You don't have to pay for representation from a veteran service organization. So, so why not use an organization that's professional like DAV? So I, I would echo, echo that. Um, but there's a, there's a lot of information on va.gov. Uh, the website's been redesigned, so it's easy to find everything. Uh, you go to the website and there's, you can see right off, off the top that there is uh, links for getting information about claims and how to file them and what's the status. And uh, all that information is much more readily available now uh, and easily uh, findable on the internet. Okay. And of course, there's also, uh, in addition to using your veteran service organization representative, uh, you can always call your local VA office as well uh, and get information that way. Awesome. Well, thanks, uh, David. I really appreciate all the information you were able to shed a lot of light on a topic I think that's, that can be con confusing and maybe a little intimidating for, for some people out there. So um, we really appreciate it. Again, um, go to dav.org slash COVID. We have updated information for the ongoing pandemic um, that has to do with not just uh, VA exams, but other resources as well. Um, and again, David, we really appreciate it. Um, thanks a lot. You're welcome.